Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition where I love giving you insights and information about the board games you just might want to have in your own collection. So I'm a big fan of dry Euro games, I'm a big fan of Stefan Feld, so I'm super excited to be able to tell you about one of his latest releases, which is The Castles of Tuscany. The Castles of Tuscany sets you up as a prince building up your region. During the game, you're going to place coloured hexes out onto your board and each colour gives you a bonus when placed. The game scores three times as you fill up your board and you'll want to have points in both the green and the red zones to earn victory. Thing one, what's this game all about? Theme? <laughs> what theme? <laughs> Yeah, no theme to be found here. Sure, the rule book mentioned something about princes and provinces, but it's a completely irrelevant topic, to be fair. This is a game about placing hexes. Um, now, do I do I miss the theme? Um, not particularly. The, this game feels a little bit like an abstract strategy game. So I didn't miss the fact there wasn't a story or a setting or, or really anything other than mechanics. Um, now, similar games to this, well, it has to be compared to the Castles of Burgundy that does similar kinds of things. But oddly enough, it also reminded me of the games in the Mask trilogy set, which are Tikal, Java and Mexica. Um, that tactile nature kind of, I don't know, reminded me of those. Um, and also the fact that you have a board with the number of actions you're allowed to complete on it. So I think there's some similarities to be had there. Thing two, mechanics. So the Castles of Tuscany is a tile laying game or a hex laying game and it's one in which you're going to place these coloured hexes um, together or in different zones um, to achieve different bonuses. Um, and how you place these hexes is that you have a handful of cards, the colours of which will match these tiles. And you need to have two of the same cards of the same colour of the tile you want to place to be able to place it. Um, I didn't have too much difficulty in, you know, having those colours available to me when I wanted them. Um, there is also the option where you can trade two of any colour card to become one of another card and this is really, really helpful as well. Now, the, when you draft the tiles, however, um, that's less adaptive. So to pick new tiles to place out onto your board, um, they're laid out on the table and you get to draft them. Um, but the problem is with that is that you could be looking for a particular colour of tile and it may not appear for one turn, many turns. Um, and that can really kind of hinder how you're kind of growing um, your own board. Um, I think this might be better with more than two players because you'll have access to further tiles. But that also means there'll be more kind of competition um, the more tiles that are available. So I'm not sure how this works out. I wish there had been a way to, you know, replace tiles more um, in the way that they did with kind of the hand management. Um, now, the game scores three times um, as you play it. Um, and I think this is really, really interesting. And how it's done is that every time you place out a tile onto your board, it's part of a timer, right? So it's a tick down. So when you run out of the first stack of those tiles, the first scoring round happens. Um, I liked it a lot. It made the game very timely. I think this game is very well paced, actually. Um, now, the scoreboard itself is also another enigma because it's the scoreboard wrapped inside of a scoreboard. Um, so as you've probably seen in the pictures, the scoreboard is circular, so the outer ring is red, the inner ring is green. And how it works is that any points you get on the green um, track are added to the points on the red track. And the green track continues to go up so it can increase, you know, over the turns. So you want to get as many points kind of onto that, that that add to the red. Um, it's an unusual thing. I don't know how, you know, game changing it was. Did it feel very important? Um, not particularly so. Um, I don't know, but I, I thought it was, you know, a nice touch, I suppose. It was kind of interesting. One of the tiles also gives you a set of bonus cards to draw from. And while they were interesting and they gave you kind of like little perks, we didn't feel like they were particularly game changing. You know, we weren't in a real hurry to get more of them, if that makes sense. Um, overall, this game is very simple. Um, it's very easy to pick up and to learn. And there's something kind of elegant in its simplicity. However, I'm just not sure how compelling it is to play. Thing three on the table. 
I think the colours used in the Castles of Tuscany really help it pop when it's set up on the table. What I'm not a fan of, however, is how disparate all of the different game pieces are. You're not playing from a communal game board. Um, it didn't feel like we were playing a game together. Rather, it felt like we were all playing our own individual games. Now it's quick to set up and quick to put away um, and the turns of course are also quick too because you can only perform one action a turn um, and it takes about 40 minutes for two of us to play. The rule book for this is perfectly adequate. Now replayability wise um, this is a tough one because I've played it three times now um, and yes the game is quite similar every time you play but I'm almost treating this like an abstract strategy game where you do expect you know things to follow a particular pattern. So for sure this game is a little bit samey but I didn't find it in the aggravating way but rather it was the kind of a comforting way if that makes any sense. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, compared to some of the other games in the Ilya catalogue, this one is particularly bold and bright, um, but that really doesn't hide the multitude of sins going on here. So there's two shades of green used in the game and they can be very difficult to tell apart. Um, not only that, there's little to no artwork whatsoever and the stuff you get is tiny, it's only teeny tiny tiles. And it's so small that it goes so far as to be completely indistinct when you place them out on your board. Um, the cards you get are small size, they're not even full size cards. And generally it just doesn't feel like you've got value for money out of this box. The component quality overall is okay, but it's really nothing special. Um, I'd go so far as to say that if this game didn't have a designer name attached to it, I don't think you'd pick it up to try it out. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Well, The Castles of Tuscany comes with a whole bunch of providence behind it, right? Because it comes from a designer we all know, a publisher we're familiar with, and it shares a title with a game that we all know and love, Castles of Burgundy. So it's got a whole, you know, bunch of expectations floating around here already before you even open the box. But I'm going to try and talk about the game on its own merits. So this is a very simplistic tile placement game where you're matching the colours to, to get actions. Um, and it's easy to teach and it's easy to play. It's got a kind of a laid back feel to it. And if you're the type of person that's fed up with Feld throwing too many mechanics at you, you'll be pleasantly surprised by this. Certainly I'm disappointed it wasn't a more complicated Feld, but that doesn't mean the game doesn't have its own charms and interest too. Um, the problem with it, however, is that this game is always going to feel like it's lacking something and that's because essentially it is. This feels like a stripped down version of the Castles of Burgundy and you're going to find yourself missing all those extra pieces that, you know, the previous title has that this kind of shorter, quicker version just, you know, doesn't have. Um, yeah, I'm disappointed. I wanted to like this game more than I did, but that doesn't mean it's not enjoyable. Rather, it's just highlighting the fact that this isn't the Feld I thought it was going to be. Do I think you should have the Castles of Tuscany in your collection? Well, if you thought Castles of Burgundy had one too many things going on, but still want the cheap artwork and components for full price, then this is the game you're looking for. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so that you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about the Castles of Tuscany, just shout them off in the comment box below. And tune in again next time for some more short and informative board game reviews.